everybody, welcome back. I know I did not post anything last week. Last week was a uh, little bit of a, um, well, it was supposed to be a mental health week and catching up on all the stuff that I've been neglecting week, but it turns out that week was more chaotic than anything and uh, I did not accomplish any of the things that I wanted to accomplish. Anyway, so here's Mo, little monster. He got neutered exactly one week ago, and we were using the studio as his room to, uh, you know, recover. And somehow he's just gotten even more ballsy. Also, please excuse the drop cloth. I'm working on a painting, you know, my OnlyFans ballet foot art. There is a painting. It should not get in the way because today we are doing a pirouette tutorial. And now he's tossing litter all over the floor. This is my life. And Steve's not around to help. He's in New York this week. So not just any pirouette tutorial. This is a question from Donna Marie. Poor Donna Marie asked this question two years ago and then asked, oh my goodness. And then she asked it again during my salty Sunday. So that means poor Donna Marie is still struggling with this same issue. So I went back into my comments and she was saying how she was falling out of the turns. She's about to give up hope. She can barely even get around one time. And then I asked, uh, where are you falling? Like, where are you going? And she said, usually I fall forward or I can't always make it fully around. One thing that recently seemed to help me a lot was where I placed my weight in plie. Most say it should be 50-50 or a bit more in the front leg. One person suggested really putting the weight in the front leg as it's easier to get into passe without getting off balance and that has helped me. I am trying to figure out a good strength, feet, leg, core, back, and arm program. If you have a strength workout program, I would love for you to share it. He thinks this is the coolest thing in the world, like a little tunnel. So I don't have a particular strengthening routine or program for pirouettes specifically, but there are, you know, different parts of the body that we can focus on that might actually help you get around and do a full pirouette. I hope, I really hope so. So when I first started learning pirouettes, my teacher had us stand at the bar in fourth position, and just practice going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And then she would have us do just two fingers on the bar. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, and then hopefully you had the turn. Another thing you can do is, um, let's say you're turning to the left. So you're actually going to have your left hand on the bar and prepare for your left or pirouette. Your goal is to already be in your passe and balancing by the time you get here. So you really are just doing a half a pirouette, and then the bar is only there for you to grab onto if, for some reason, you feel yourself falling. So we've established in the past, and also in Donna Marie's comment, 
that there are different ways to distribute your weight before your pirouette. Some people do 50-50, some people do more weight in the front leg, and it looks like more weight in the front leg is helping Donna Marie. However, little side note, when you're doing grand pirouettes, such as like attitude and arabesque pirouettes, uh, you don't bend the back leg. I think it's like not allowed. The back leg has to be straight when you do those grand pirouettes. Donna Marie said that she's falling forward. It seems that she falls forward before she can get around. So let's see what's going on. So if you're falling forward, in your pirouette, it makes me think that you might actually be looking down or your shoulders and upper body might be pitched too far forward. Like you're so focused on getting your weight over the front foot that maybe your upper body is starting to dip forward and that's what's making you fall forward. So even though your weight is in the front leg, that doesn't mean to lean over the front leg and look down over the front leg. It's still a vertical fourth position, just like you would do at the bar when you're doing your plies. It's still a vertical upper body and open square hips. Just because I'm preparing for a pirouette, it doesn't mean my upper body changes. Generally, when we want to reach forward for a pirouette, a couple of things happen. You think of going out forward instead of down forward, or you can think of your arms being like more out in front of you rather than tucked too close in. Some people close their arms too much and it kind of like brings them back, or for the people that fall back or have the tendency to fall back, it might help them to have longer, rounder arms to get more weight forward. But it sounds like there's, there's, oh boy. But it sounds like you're going a little too far forward and that's kind of what I want to focus on. The fact that you are falling forward might also mean that you're not um, engaging your butt and your abs in the, in the correct way. There is like a kind of shortening feeling here, like a contraction, like, like right here is just all connected and solid. The ribs don't separate from the hips. They kind of travel as one. But if you're falling forward, that, that probably means you're not squeezing your butt the whole way through. Because when you squeeze your butt and rotate it, and you have that like wiping back to front feeling, that kind of corrects that. I mean, you could be falling forward, but at least now your hips and your butt and your legs are forced to stay under you. You know, when you let go of those butt muscles in that rotation, then that can release all of that. And it's not so much that you're falling forward, it's that your butt is falling out behind you. <laughs> On the other hand, if you concentrate too hard on keeping this engaged and forward, then the back starts to curve. And we don't want curvy backs in ballet. If anything, sometimes it, you should feel like there's almost such a lift that there is even the tiniest little bit of an arch. Sometimes when you want to sustain certain turns, you do need the tiniest bit of an arch. And it's not coming from the butt. It's not coming from sticking out the lower spine. It's coming from lifting up under the shoulder blades. It's a, it's a very like up and, and regal and royal feeling. Pirouettes are mostly psychological. And I know you've probably heard that before and you're thinking, well, that's great, Victoria. How does that help me? I'm scared to death of pirouettes. Uh, like maybe fake it till you make it. Just like, it's a very up royal, like, yes, I own this stage. I own, like, I own this floor. It's very like, you have to think very highly of yourself to be suspended like that. So if having more weight in the front leg is working for you, that's fine. You can keep more of that weight in the front leg. But remember, you are still cranked out here. Just because you're leaning forward, doesn't mean you let the butt cheeks go.
oh, I almost did a triple and I haven't taken class in forever. The key things that I am thinking about when I do a pirouette, when I start a pirouette, I could break it down in slow motion. Oh, well I can, I've got the editor. I can edit it and slow it down in, the, in iMovie, let's go. So I'm already thinking about pressing my shoulders down. I'm really loading this plie and I don't even push off until I've already started turning. Look, my feet and my arms are almost in second position before I push up. So I was a little late to pick up my passe, as usual, I'm overcrossing a little bit. But my upper body is doing something correct. My left arm, my left rib cage, my left scapula, they're all pushing forward. They're the driving force really pushing forward in the turn. I'm keeping my arms level, I'm keeping a sharp spot. I do hop a little bit here to correct that delay when I picked up my passe too late. And you can see how after that hop, I do correct it. I'm finally in a nice, good, high, not overcrossed passe. But I unfortunately lost my spot because I was not anticipating getting around three times. So it just goes to show how important spotting is. Sometimes you can squeeze out an extra turn if you have a sharp spot. So Donna Marie, I think you mentioned that your teacher says that you should be able to end your pirouette still balancing. And yes, that can be done. Usually the men do that because they're taught from very young how, how to sustain those balances and those pirouettes. That's how they do like four, five, six, seven of them. Some women do that too, but I missed that class. I missed the workshop that taught women how to do like 10 pirouettes. Sorry, I can only do like three on a good day. But I think the key to helping you not only stay up but also prevent some of that falling forward is to really think of the, the back knee really like taking you. It's like somebody just lifted up and is bringing it behind you. If anything, when you start your pirouette, try to keep bringing it higher and higher. I have this really bad habit of overcrossing. Almost all of my videos, you'll see me overcrossing at some point. But the things that help me manage that at least a little bit is to imagine like already when I'm in my fourth position already before I even take off this knee getting ready to start and open and there's a moment in my plie right before takeoff where I do open the arms into like a second position and for a brief moment my shoulders and hips are aligned. So let me show it in a face. Usually you don't see this because we usually start pirouettes in like a quasi position. And even if you do linger in plie a little longer, it's not as obvious. But in a face, you see it more. So look, right now we've got this kind of opposition feeling. It's like the right leg is back, but the right arm is in front. And how am I supposed to prep for this turn? But there is a moment if you if you press down right here it almost feels more like you're taking off from a small second position and have you ever practiced doing pirouettes from second position for some reason i'm better at doing pirouettes from first position or second position because i'm not so preoccupied with this trying to get a crossed leg up in front of me that always seemed to screw me up. I was always so preoccupied with trying to uh, waste this around that my hip would kind of drop and that kind of leads to my overcrossing. But when I do a pirouette from first position or second position, it's just, of course I can't land it because I almost stepped on the cat right under me. But, um, Oh no, he wants to fight. But it just feels so much more even, centered, more manageable. It's easier to get from passe from here than it is from ugh, here. So while we are taught to do our pirouettes 
from forth to just like cut the air and bring it up. But if you imagine that right before you take off, shoulders are over your hips, and then all you gotta do is kind of, it's like a little swivel, it's like a little pivot, and it feels so much more efficient. Oh, he thinks it's a game. <laughs> it feels so much more efficient to get that little like flick, that like springboard action. That's actually kind of where flick flack comes from. The whole point of flick flack is to teach you how to turn. And this is happening in a pirouette, basically. You gotta, it's like a little flick, spring action, flick it, whip it, twist it. Uh, like when you flick a top or you wanna spin a coin on the table, it's similar. So again, it's more noticeable if I do this a face because you see there's a moment where I'm facing the camera almost in like second position. You don't always see this when you do your pirouettes and quasi. I overturn. <laughs> I'm supposed to finish that way. There's also some upper body stuff that I have not really like thought about until recently. It hasn't really clicked for me until maybe the past couple of months. But, um, but when you turn, it's not just a twisting and pulling of the side that is going in the direction that you want to go. It is also a pushing from the opposite side. So a lot of the times when we think of doing a pirouette or a turn, we're thinking, okay, I'm turning to the left. So that means my whole left side has to go. And then we forget about the right side. It has to be almost like you have a board across your back. It doesn't turn piece by piece. You don't, it, it's not so much your torso rolling like a wheel. It's more like a board, like a flat board that just, of course I can't get my arms in front of me, but it's more like a flat board that just has to bring the whole back around in one unit. We think of like one side going and then the other side rolling and following after. It's just one solid like flip flop. Um, don't turn like this though, because uh, you can't get your arms in front of you, you can't get your elbows in front of you, you can't really use the upper back. But this is the kind of like feeling it should be, but with your arms in front of you. Other things that may make you fall forward is just, even just your head. You might think you're looking like straight ahead, and your eyes might be looking straight ahead, but if your head is down even a little bit, that can make a big difference. Like imagine giving yourself more length and more space under your chin. It is also possible, maybe you need to raise your arms a little bit. Maybe your center of gravity is a little bit different than everybody else's. Most of the time when we close our arms in first position, it's right across from our belly button. But it's possible like maybe you need your arms just the tiniest bit higher, maybe like across from the diaphragm, you know, that will help you lean back a little bit. Like we never want to actually lean back in a turn, but if your problem is leaning forward, it is possible you just need to keep your arms a little higher. And that also means starting your preparation with your arms a little higher. So your arms, this is something that happens a lot. It happens to me a lot. We start in a plie and then we go up and releve but we tend to either keep our arms here and the body keeps going up into releve, or we do the opposite. We go up into releve and then our arms kind of compensate for that. So our arms were prepared for a pirouette at this level, but by the time we actually got up, the arms shifted. So you have to be mindful of keeping your arms in your body, like wherever your body is in space, up or down, your arms have to also move with your torso. You can't prepare here and then leave them down. You can't prepare here and then try to fly up. So don't think of your arms as like floating out here in space to just kind of like throw out and then gather back in. They're a part of your body. 
So engaging those back muscles will keep your arms anchored to your torso, not just floating at arbitrary levels in space. You know, I'm a, I'm a back faller, not a forward faller. So anyway, I'm kind of running out of time. I have to edit this real quick and then go out and um, shovel all that snow because I can't pull the ripcord of the snowblower because I'm hypermobile and I would probably just dislocate my shoulder if I tried. <laughs> So I hope these tips helped you. Thank you so much for watching and stay salty, everybody.